Welcome once again to our Wednesday morning service of the Word. It's good to anticipate being with you and to know uh, that wherever we are, the Lord is with us and he loves us and he cares for us. So let's quieten our hearts and our minds. And let's remember that wherever we are, whatever our circumstances, whatever we're facing at the moment, the Lord is with us. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Give us the joy of your saving help. And sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Once again, on a Wednesday morning, we come together in the name of Christ. We come to offer our praise and thanksgiving. We want to hear and receive God's holy word. We will pray for the needs of the world and we will ask for God's forgiveness for our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Let's just spend a moment reflecting upon the week that has passed since we last met and those things that perhaps are hindering us experiencing the fullness of God's love in our lives. Jesus says repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn from our sin and turn to Christ let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against, against you. you. We, we have, have done, done evil in your sight. sight. We, we are, are sorry and repent. repent. Have, have mercy, mercy on us according to your love. love. Wash, Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. sin. Renew a right spirit within, within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation through jesus christ our lord amen may the father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through jesus christ our lord Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song we will praise our God. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us now pray with one heart and mind as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. Dear Lord, may the light of your presence set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. River, wash over me. Cleanse me and make me new. Bathe me, refresh me, and fill me anew. River, wash over me. Last Sunday the Gospel reading was all about our Lord setting his face steadfastly towards Jerusalem and telling his disciples that he must die. And this particular part of the message didn't sit too lightly on the disciples' shoulders because it wasn't what they wanted to hear. 
but for all of us, you and I together, there are times in our lives when our Lord speaks into our situation and we don't like it very much. So we can easily identify uh, with the disciples when they said, let's hear something else. Let's hear something that's more pleasing to our ears. Let's hear something that will help us uh, to grow or help us to be blessed or encourage us in the way. But don't tell us about this business of dying on a cross. Well, they needed to know the truth of that message just as you and I need to know it uh, today. And when we look at the Gospel for last Sunday, we will see, uh, first of all, that there is in it a call. And that call is to anyone. How pleased I am about that. And I hope you are too. That you're included in that word. Anyone. There may be people in life who would shun you or push you to one side or even not want to know you. There may be some in life who think you're not worthy. But that is not what our Lord thinks. He comes to us and he says, now look, this is my message. I'm going to die, but I'm going to rise again too. And my message is for anyone who has ears to hear and a heart to understand. But there's not only a call in that gospel, there is a choice, quite obviously. And that choice is, will I, dare I, do I want to follow a someone who is going to die? Yes, I would like to follow a great warrior. I'd like to follow someone who would be a great uh, soldier and someone who would bring victory and in the disciples sense, who would bring again the kingdom to Israel. This didn't seem to be the way. And so there was a choice that they had to make. And eventually the disciples said to whom can we go? For you and you alone have the words of eternal life. But that's a choice. No one can make it for you. The church can't make it for you. Your family can't make it for you. This has to be your choice and my choice to say yes to the message of Jesus and the person of Christ. But the gospel not only faces us with a call and a choice, it faces us with a cost. And the cost is, if any man would be my disciple, he'd take, he will deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Jesus never promised us an easy way of life. In fact, our Lord was always honest and open. Quite often before an election, Politicians will make all kinds of promises and when they get into office they find they can't keep them. But our Lord is not like that. He is truthful. He is the truth. And he lays before us the path we are to follow. And that path is defined in two ways. First of all, by self-denial. Some people, of course, take a very negative point of view on self-denial but in actual fact when you think about it there are many many cases in life when self-denial is a good thing to do for instance there's lots and lots of people going around now with um, they're overweight and wouldn't it be a good thing if they were to deny themselves the very things that were making them overweight Denial is not a negative thing necessarily, it's a positive thing. Someone has said, can you do too much for those whom you love? 
And maybe we might say, can I do too much for the Saviour who loved me and gave himself for me? Deny yourself, our Lord said, and take up the cross. And taking up the cross simply means, as with our Lord, to do the will of God and to be aware of the needs of others. David Livingstone, whom many of you will have known about, he had as a very severe illness that brought him back from Africa. And when he recovered, he expressed the wish to go back to Africa and, and his family and his friends said, look, you've done enough for goodness sake, give yourself a break and settle here. But no, David Livingstone said, when I think of what he's done for me, I must do the little I can for him. And that is the sum essence of what it means to follow Jesus, to hear that call, to make that choice and to face the cost. Now, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we continue to pray and open our hearts before the God of love as we pray for all who are affected by coronavirus through illness or isolation or anxiety. Oh dear Lord, in your mercy may they find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping national policies. Lord, May they be led by your Holy Spirit to make wise and right decisions. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for doctors, nurses and medical researchers that through their skill and insight, many will be restored to health. We pray for those known to us who are ill at this time. Peg Malpas, Anthony Staples, Anne Bateman, Betty Bailey, Kate Brantingham, Gary Pollock, Stephen Bradburn, Ken Wilkinson, Anne Higgs, Teresa and Ina. Catherine, Jenny, Richard Sliman. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We remember before your throne of grace the vulnerable and the fearful. We remember the gravely ill and the dying. O oh Lord, May they know your comfort and peace. And at this time we remember before the Lord with thanksgiving, Stuart May, Gladys Cash, Art Higgs, Kenneth Chilton. 
we pray too for their families and for all who will miss them in their passing from this world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God, we gather our prayers and praises into one as we say together. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as we remember the gospel reading and how the disciples were struggling to understand the message that our Lord was giving, so the song may indeed speak to our hearts. Give me a sight, O Saviour, of thy wondrous love to me, of the love that brought thee down to earth to die on Calvary. Oh, make me understand it, help me to take it in, what it meant to thee, the Holy One, to bear away my sin. The Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, don't forget and tune in uh, next Sunday to the the morning service which will be taken by Vicky. In the meantime, goodbye, God bless and keep well.